in swap cup we specify a parameter by its hydrologic group soil texture land use subbasin number and slope and then there is a qualifier for example soil hydraulic conductivity uh, these brackets are because there are different layers of soil hydraulic conductivity so each parameter which has different layers uh, you need to use a bracket to specify which layer and if you don't put a number that means all layers so soil hydraulic conductivity in um, extension in soil file based on hydrologic group soil texture um, land use subbasin number and slope so this really goes even deeper than uh, an HRU so you can really specify the value of a parameter based on many of its characteristics now if I don't have uh, if I don't want to use hydrologic group then I can just take that away but the two underlines have to be here right these are all two underlines and then if I don't want to have the subbasin number I can take that out but the two underlines of the subbasin number has to be here followed by the slope now for qualifier if I use V that means a value change that means I want to change the existing value with another value like alpha if I use R that means a relative change that means I want to multiply the existing value by 1 plus alpha 1 plus a certain number and if I use A an additional value additional value change so I would like to even either add or subtract a number from the existing value so how can I uh, give you an example let me try to give you an example of this let's take CN2 CN2 uh, if you go back to uh, SWOT input output manual you see that here is a definition of CN2 and how CN2 is specified. So initially, based on your soil map, land use map, uh, arc SWOT assigns a number to, uh, of CN2 to each um, HRU. So where does it get those numbers from? It gets it from your soil map and your land use map based on these specifications here. So if your land use falls into these categories and your treatment practices falls in these categories in your management and your hydrologic group fall into these categories, then these are the value of CN2. It's very important that you understand this and also with other parameters so you know the changes you are making, what they mean. So if my hydraulic, if my CN2 value is 672, for example, initially, and I change that to 63, so I'm basically changing my land use, right? And hydrologic group and everything about it. So how exact is your land use map? So if it's you do put a lot of work in obtaining a land use map and then you just completely change it when it comes to the calibration so that is not allowed you have to understand from what value to what value you're changing and if that makes any sense so please read this section in your SWOT uh, input output manual now if I go back to my uh, presentation here and I show you Initially, CN2 has such a value based on land use, soil, uh, etc. And then I would like to make uh, some changes. So if I use V with respect to CN2, if I have such a parameter specification, and I say from 34 to 72, so CN2 number changes from 20, I think, to 90 in that range. So if I use such a specification, what happens is, and my Latin hypercube draws a number, right? The sample from here, and then it implements that, and I get this. So that's what this means. 
So I'm replacing everywhere all my land uses with one land use. So there goes my heterogeneity of land use and soil and so on. And some people even use this, where they have a V, a value change from minus 0.2 to 0.2. That doesn't, what SWAT does, it put everything to uh, 20, for example, if, a neg if it's a negative number. So this is not allowed. Please don't do this. Um, if you have, again, back to my uh, CN2 distribution uh, map here, now, if I have a situation like this, this I want to change CN2 within and about plus minus 20%, right? So I should know what that means. So that means my given CN2, my initial CN2, which is based on soil map, land use map, and all that, is being multiplied. And if I draw a random sample here, right, as we do in the Latin attitude sampling, and I draw minus uh, 0 0.15, then my existing CN2 value, which let's say it's 73, is being multiplied by 0 0.85. So I end up with 62.5 as CN2. So you can go back to that table and you see uh, from 73 to CX2 to 62, what is being changed? You know, how are you changing your land use? And if I say um, my initial value was 35, and I multiply that by 0 0.85, I get 29.7. So I go from here, this land use, to that land use. Here I go from this land use. Here. So you really have to know what you are doing and what this parameter means and what these numbers mean and within what range you are changing your numbers. Now, another example is if, I, if you want to use V, I mean, you can use V with CN2, but you have to be very, very specific. So you, I want to use, I want to change the value of CN2 to 75 for this soil and that land use only. So this will be applied only to these conditions, or I want to change value, make a value change for CN2. I want to go uh, only for subbasin number one. So only in that subbasin, I want to make that change. You cannot use such a condition and put a value on it, right? You cannot make a value change with this, this condition. Or another option is you give the name of your management file. So exactly in that management file, whatever soil, land use, whatever it has, uh, instead of putting uh, all the other qualifiers, you can give the name of that file. So the SWOT edit program goes to specifically this file and changes the value of CN2 to, to that num. Now, where do these, uh, uh, I mean, how do I know which one to change, which qualifier applies, and uh, how, where can I find that? And that's very easy. You just have to go to your, to your SWOT uh, parameter files. So let me go up here. Uh, for example, uh, let me open this. This is pound. Pound. Uh, if you have a pound, you see in this first line of every SWOT file, you see that the only subbasin is specified. That means you can define the value, these parameters for only specific subbasins. There is no land use involved. There is no soil involved. No slope. Nothing. Just the specific sub number. Uh, Subbasin number, I can apply these parameters. If I go to subbasin, again, here you see that these parameters can only be applied to subbasin. So in those qualifiers, I can only specify subbasin number, right? I cannot give soil texture, land use, hydrologic group, or anything like that. If I go to, uh, let's say, groundwater file, in a groundwater file, you see, you're given an HRU, so groundwater goes down to HRU. The parameters of groundwater can be specified down to HRU level, because here you give also subbasin number, HRU number, subbasin number. So you have HRU number one. Your land use is, is this, uh, is forest. Your soil type is that, 
and your slope is that. So I can actually fit this parameter based on a certain land use, certain uh, soil, certain certain slope, certain HIU number, and a certain uh, sub-basin number. So you have to know your parameter, where it's coming from, and on what basis you can change it. The same with management. Management, you can go down to HRU level. So you can specify soil, land use, slope, and, and all that. So that's how you know what qualifiers you can use uh, to, specify the, to specify your parameters. So to go further here, again, I have put here the, C, uh, the CN2 table from the in, in and out um, manual of SWOT. It's very important that you really get to know these parameters, right? So you have a feeling for how you can change them and what they mean. Now, don't take the entire range of parameters. So I see a lot of you, uh, first to start, you just open your uh, SWAT cup, make the project, and you take 20 parameters, whatever you think that you, you you should have, and then you put the entire range, the entire absolute range from the absolute file. This parameter ranges given in this are the absolute physical range of a parameter, which you can edit, by the way, make it more or less. Now, you cannot take that entire range, right? You have to start from a smaller range that you within from within the existing parameter value so you take some smaller or if you have any information that why you should change a certain to a certain range so you could use that but don't take initially the entire range of the parameter and try to and then 20 parameters and see whatever you can get out of that this you you can end up with completely wrong parameter value so don't do that 